I have Chad Popplewell with me here. Um, he is the tech product specialist, so um, we're going to jump right into it. Um, we're going to be talking today about the SafePath sensor products and some Atom sensor monitoring changes and revisions that have come up. Um, for those of you who have a product binder, you can actually follow along with us if you would like. Um, we're going to be running through in the same order that things are in the current product binder. Um, also, we want to let you know that you can ask questions at any time. There is a question mark icon on the right-hand side of the screen. If you click that, it will open up a chat box and you can chat directly to us. Um, I'll be receiving the questions here and getting over to Chad, the expert, so he can answer them. Uh, so feel free to ask those at any time and we'll try to get to all of those. Um, and if we don't get to your question, we'll answer it afterwards. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is, um, since we're going through the binder, if you haven't received a binder um, or you need a new binder, um, you can also submit a question and just let us know that you need a binder and we'll get one of those sent out to you right after the webinar. All right, Chad, so let's get right into it, um, starting out with the MicroStar M of our SafePath products. Um, yeah, the first couple of products we're going to cover are going to be our, our motion sensor products. Uh, MicroStar M is a motion sensor that's mainly designed for pedestrian detection for smaller automatic doors. Uh, because it uses microwave, it is looking for motion and not presence. Uh, but once you are detected with the microstar, it kicks into what's called a micro motion detection mode. Uh, that will pick up very subtle movement of a quarter inch per second. Um, typically, these are mounted above an automatic door and they're used to detect somebody walking up to it before you get to the door, the door starts to open. It's got a visible LED on the outside of it that indicates what state it's in. If it's got a green LED, it hasn't seen you yet. Uh, if it's got a red LED, then it's picked up detection and it's tripped its relay contact. And uh, it's very versatile for most pedestrian applications. Uh, we also sell a bracket that you can use for mounting it to a ceiling or uh, mounting it off center on a door header. And we've got a rain cover that we can sell with that as well. Perfect. Yeah, uh, nice small little product there. Um, and for those of you watching, you can see the slides here. Um, we're showing some of those technical aspects. If you need those, um, we will have a video available afterwards. You can review this and hear chat again. Um, and also those are in the binder if you need to reference any of those specs or any of the ranges there. I think the next product we have is the ID20, which is a commercial application, correct? Uh, the ID20 is kind of the big brother of the MicroStar. Uh, it's got a longer detection range. It's more used for vehicle, uh, small vehicles such as a forklift, or it can do pedestrian detection, but typically it's if you need a little more range than what the MicroStar is able to offer you. It detects up to 60 feet away. It's got a maximum pattern width of 18 feet at its uh, max range. And a lot of times you'll see these for overhead or high-speed roll-up doors, warehouse situations, some manufacturing plants. Uh, and it's capable of picking up vehicle traffic. Um, so if you've got a high-speed application like the typical garage doors or high-speed roll-up doors, that's what it's primarily for. All right, and then our last motion sensor we have is the Domino 1100. Domino 1100 is uh, kind of our latest sensor that we've got out. It's an intermediate type of sensor for the motion detection. It's a little bigger than the MicroStar, but not quite as big as the ID20. Uh, matter of fact, we've got one here. Mm -hmm. um, the unit kind of looks Typical to this. Uh, so I got the MicroStar here. Exactly. And the and Domino here. The Domino 1100. Uh, you can mount it up to uh, 23 feet high and it's capable of detecting out about 26 feet from uh, where it's mounted. Uh, the good thing about the Domino 1100 is it actually has two relay outputs on it as opposed to the one that the MicroStar offers. Uh, the two relay outputs on the Domino uh, can be separated so that you can use one relay for people detection, the other relay is going to be used for vehicle detection. So if you've got a, uh, say an auto dealership that's got an overhead door as well as a pedestrian door sitting off to the side of it, you can use one output to open just the pedestrian door, one output to open the high-speed roll-up door. A nice little form factor there in the domino. Um, so now we can get into the presence sensor, and I think we're in the DH series, so the DH400 is the next one, correct? Yeah, uh, the DH400 a lot of times is used for a swing door safety sensor. Uh, the versatility of the DH400 allows it to be mounted 
above the door on the swing side or the pull side of the door. And it's primarily used to detect people when they're standing behind a door, keep the door from opening and smacking them. Uh, or if they have walked through, they're talking on their cell phone, and while the door is still standing open, they just kind of stop. It keeps the door from closing on them and pinning them between the door and the door frame. Uh, the DH400 is very versatile in the fact that you can turn off rows of detection to the right and the left. So if you have to mount it off center above a door, you can turn off part of the detection on one side or the other in order to make it uh, detect the area that you need to between guide rails, that sort of thing. And it's the most versatile of the infrared sensors that we use. Uh, because it is an infrared sensor, it's looking for presence and not so much motion. So if you walk into the pattern that you've got set on the sensor, it will pick you up and uh, continue to hold you until the presence timer expires. Uh, as long as you're moving, it should continue to see you and continue to tell the door that there's somebody there. Perfect. Uh, and then we're on to the DH-94 next. Uh, DH-94 is similar to the DH-400 in the fact that it's an infrared presence sensor. But unlike DH400, it's more used for shallow type approaches. Uh, if you've got strip malls where you've got multiple doors right in a row, you can use these on those, and it limits the amount of detection range. So not everybody walking down the sidewalk in front of all these doors is going to be setting it off. You can turn off rows of detection to make it less deep as far as pattern size. And it's typically used in those kind of applications where you don't want as much range, but you still want to offer presence detection out in front of the door. Perfect. Yeah, so just make sure that they only get those people that are walking directly up to the exactly. door instead of tripping every time that there's some traffic going okay. by. Uh, great use case there. DH100CT is next. Uh, the DH100CT is actually one of the sensors that is going to be more applicable to the ANSI VHMA standards we're going to talk about here in just a few minutes. Um, but the DH100 was typically used for sliding door applications on both sides, so you could put a DH100 on each side of a sliding door and it would pick people up on either side and trigger the door to open or keep the door from closing. The CT version of that actually has a test input feature that can be used for the sensor monitoring features that were added with the NCBHMA standard. Uh, the 100 CT does have a very wide pattern so it can be used in multiple different sizes of sliding doors, everything from a, a single partition slider to uh, a dual type slider. Okay, and then the last of the DH series, the DHR3. Uh, DHR3 is kind of a hybrid combination detector. It's got a microwave motion part to it, but it also has the active infrared presence detection. Uh, the microwave motion will pick you up as you're walking toward the door, but then the infrared will grab you and uh, detect as long as you're standing in front of the door. So it, it offers a good advanced approach detection with the microwave, but then it also can be used as a safety sensor with the infrared part of it. Perfect. Uh, again, it is one of the sensors that does feature the test input that we're going to commonly use with the sensor monitoring. All right, and then the last of our sensors, the SSS-5. The SSS-5 is actually a door-mounted, what a lot of people refer to as a safety stick or safety sensor. Uh, the SSS-5 mounts to the door and it will actually move with the door, so it's not as much a, a stationary sensor. Uh, it doesn't mount above the door and, and get locked out while the door is in motion, so you don't really need any kind of a, an interface between the sensor and the door to keep it from seeing the door as the door is moving. Uh, because of that, it's comparable to uh, some of the other products that are mounted on the door and move with the door. And the upgrade from the SSS4 to the SSS5, which happened just recently, uh, means that you only need one sensor head with the enclosure that you're ordering with the SSS5. They've strengthened the sensor head in there so it covers the entire width of the door. So you're going to be a lot better coverage with the SSS5. And again, this one does have the test the feature as well. And does the SSS-5 sense weed eaters as they're going by outside the door? Sorry for that, guys. Yeah, we apologize for the noise, <laughs> but uh, unfortunately our mowing crew outside is, is making some extra noise. Yeah. 
So yes, uh, good mention there on the upgrade from the SSS4 to the SSS5. We've seen some people pretty happy with the, with the changes there. Yeah, the SSS4 was uh, a sensor that we've had out for a while, but uh, we went to the SSS5 because it had a better detector head on it. Instead of ordering uh, a unit that has multiple detector heads to cover wider doors, you can cover that entire width with the SSS5, only having one detector head. All right, before we move on to our add-on changes then, um, I just wanted to pause for a second. Um, Chad and I can run through these products pretty quickly. Um, so we just want to make sure if anybody did have any questions, feel free to send those in right now on those sensor products um, while I intro some of the add-on stuff that we're going to be doing. Um, so we did talk about those last three products being um, compliant with some of these revisions. Um, and the reason why we wanted to bring Chad on, not just because he's our product expert, but he is also Adam's certified trainer. So yeah. um, he's going out and traveling now, um, letting people know about some of these changes. Yeah, I've actually been uh, an Adam certified trainer for a couple of years, and I've been teaching some of the Adam training classes. I've also been sitting in on a lot of the meetings that happened with changing the standards. So I've got a pretty decent handle on what they're doing with the sensor monitoring and some of the upgrades they've done. And this is going to be a preview of the changes that are going to be coming, correct? They are not out yet. Uh, actually, the new standards being uh, put into effect within about 90 days from now. Uh, the final approval on the updated or revised standard should have been taking place within the last couple of days, depending on how long it takes to file the paperwork. But after the paperwork's finally at the uh, Adam ANCBHMA facilities and has all been signed off and filed, it'll be about 90 days from that and it will take effect. Perfect. Well, it looks like we must have done a pretty good job going through the sensors. We haven't got any questions, so we'll just jump into these atom changes. So we kind of have an overview of what's changed on this far. Uh, the atom standard, actually it's an ANSI BHMA standard. Uh, the standards are specifically designed for the industry people, people that actually work on automatic doors, go out and install and maintain the automatic doors. And it's mainly used for providing a safe and effective way of installing and maintaining the doors. Uh, it's, it's what the industry actually points to as the right way of doing things. So with that in mind, they took the standard that mainly applies to the power operated doors, uh, things that we a lot of times we'll refer to as a full energy operator as opposed to the low energy operators a lot of people use. And they wanted to add some more safety features. So one of the main things they did is they added a sensor monitoring requirement in a couple of the sections in that standard, uh, standard being A156.10 for anybody that's done the atom training. Uh, they also added a, another appendix that has just a short paragraph that kind of shows the scope of what they were trying to do with adding, adding the sensor monitoring. Um, they've also added some minor changes as far as the Appendix A drawings and various grammatical changes. And then they did go through and address the signage height, which is at what level you put your decals on automatic doors if they've got a glass pane uh, to show that, you know, caution automatic door signs, that sort of thing. So they did change the signage height and brought it down a little bit for shorter doors, and the science types just basically where you put your decals. So all of these changes are around safety and, and increasing the safety with automatic doors. It was more designed for trying to address the need for anybody that's still doing the power operated doors to make them a little more safe, but also in the event that you've got a sensor that's on the automatic door that fails, the door will continue to operate if the sensor's bad. Mm -hmm. They wanted to address that issue and say, hey, if the sensor's bad, we don't want the door to continue to operate and possibly hurt somebody, smack somebody, et cetera. So uh, how do we address that? And what they did is they added the sensor monitoring feature. Okay. So let's get into some of these details on the sensor monitoring. Yeah. Um, if you're familiar with any of the ANSI BHMA standards, the section two is primarily definitions for common terms that are used with the uh, door industry. They added a definition called monitoring fault, and that's just a brief description that says it's defined as a detected fault condition for the present sensor system or safety control mat system. That just refers to how do we determine if something's failed? Is there any kind of indicator? Is there anything that will show you that the sensor's not working, the safety mat's not working, et cetera? Uh, the next thing that they added was 
<clears throat> excuse me, in section 76, uh, where they talk about safety mats, they added a map monitoring that just specified that for all the mats that you've got put down that might be operating a door, you have to have some way of monitoring that they're still in working order. Uh, the same kind of thing was added with the section eight where they're talking about sensors and they added a feature that says automatic sliding, swinging, and folding door system shall include a means to verify each present sensor's functionality and the interface between the automatic door control system and each present sensor. What they want to do uh, for most manufacturers that make the automatic door controls as well as the manufacturers that make sensors like us, they want a way that you can have some sort of a signal that is there between the sensor and the automatic door system so that at one point the automatic door system can kind of tap the sensor and say, hey, are you still with us? Are you still picking things up? And the sensor will reply back. And then the automatic door knows it's okay to continue to function. Uh, most people that I've talked to in the industry say that they're going to do this prior to the closing cycle of the door. So the door will open up and just before it starts to close, it will send a signal to that sensor and say, if you're still there, you know, knock three times. Uh, basically, the sensor will trigger its relay contacts a couple of times to let the door control know that it's still there, it's still functioning. And then the door is fine to close. Uh, with our sensors, we've got a test input feature on them. Uh, on a couple of the ones that we mentioned that's going to wire into part of the door control and it's going to have a steady 12 volt signal on it. Just before the door starts to close that automatic door control is going to pull that 12 volts off and that's the signal for that sensor to pump its relay contacts a couple of times. Once that's happened the 12 volts will be reapplied to the sensor. It'll go back to its normal working state and the door will close normally. If for some reason that door control doesn't see that 12 volt signal uh, or it doesn't see the relay contacts being pumped by the sensor, it knows that there's something wrong with that sensor and it will cease operation. So effectively your door will be standing open. Uh, one way that some of the manufacturers are trying to address that is they're actually going to test the door before the door opens and then again after the door is starting or just before the door starts to close. That way if something happens with the sensor where it's not working, if it hasn't opened yet, the door will stay closed. If it's already open and you detect the sensor fault, the door will stand open. So the way they've written that standard and actually did the revision on it, they just want the door to quit working if there's a sensor having a problem. And that alerts somebody that, hey, we've got to call a repair guy or we have to turn the door control off so that the door will just be working as a manual operator at that point. Okay, so a few more at it. I think we've talked about most of these things, haven't we? Um, quite a bit of it we've covered, but okay. uh, in one section they just added the word monitoring uh, as part of the entire system. So mm -hmm. they, they basically state that a door system will include the door control, the sensors, a way to monitor the sensors, so they added the word monitoring in that section. Uh, and then they also added the Appendix E6, which just kind of provides a little bit further explanation of the sensor monitoring requirements. And it just goes to say that each revision of the standard recognizes that innovation and technical advances in the products and their applications since the last standard revision. So, in other words, the reason that they upgrade the standard is because of changes to technology and new innovative products. The presence sensor and the map monitoring is the newest revision that they've added to the standard. Uh, they also go on to say that it's not mandatory to include the presence sensor and map monitoring on door systems that are already installed. So if you've got everything out there already, if you've got a door control and sensors that are already up, you don't have to go back and retrofit everything. But for any new installs that happen after the standard goes into effect, they expect you to be compliant with it. Okay. And a few other minor changes I think we had, correct? Yeah, the, the signage height we kind of went through a little bit. Mm -hmm. but uh, And that's just for safety again to make sure that people see that there's an automatic door. Exactly. Uh, usually if you're walking up to an automatic door, you'll see commonly a, a big yellow uh, circle on the door that says caution automatic door. It's got mm -hmm. like a black line through a, a yellow field. Uh, they wanted to make sure that those were going to be a little more eye level for most people. so. 
previously they had had it that you could mount it or put that decal up at 58 inches plus or minus 4. They've reduced that height down to 50 inches, but they've given you plus or minus 12 inches of play. So everything from you know 38 inches up to 62 inches is fine as far as where to locate those decals. Another reason for changing that is because there are so many different decals and other signage that goes on a lot of these automatic doors that you run out of room to put decals at the same height and that sort of thing. So they've added a little bit of leeway there. Uh, and then the final change that they did, other than some grammatical changes, they went through and they redrew a lot of the illustrations and things that were showing common door traffic, where to put the guide rails, how to set things up for a lot of different automatic door applications that were in the Appendix A of that particular standard. So, And as everyone knows here, you were doing those grammatical changes, not me. That is your expertise, <laughs> not mine. So, <laughs> I do have a bad reputation for doing that. All right, so now we want to open it up for questions again. Um, since we have Chad here, who's Adam certified, um, if there's anything there. Um, I did see one come in here, Chad. Um, we mentioned a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but they want to know what products we currently have that are compliant with these new changes? Uh, the DH100CT is okay. going to be compliant with most sliding door applications. Uh, we do have a version of the DH400 that we're currently working on that's going to have the test input feature that we're going to use for our swing door applications for a swing door safety sensor. That's currently not available, but we're working on that and we're hoping to have that out soon. Uh, the DHR3 can be used in other applications with sliding door applications where you want a microwave as well as an infrared and it's got the test input. And then again, the SSS5 has got the test input feature on it as well. So those products right now have got our test input feature. Like I said, the DH400 and even the DH94, we're looking at adding the test input features too so that they'll be compliant, but we're still working on those a little bit. So three compliant now and two coming soon. Yep. Um, so we need to let you get off this webinar so you can go get some of those compliant? <laughs> uh, no, they actually gave me a break today just a little bit so that I don't have to work on testing on some of those. But. Sounds good. So that, that kind of answers the next question, which is how um, is MSFO preparing for these changes? We're, we're looking to make changes to even current products, and the yeah. next, future products will take this into consideration. We've actually been working in conjunction with a lot of the different manufacturers of the automatic door controls. Uh, we've got several different door controls here that have got the test input features on those, and we've been using our sensors to make sure that they're compatible, make sure that they work effectively to do what we need them to do. Uh, we're going to continue doing that with several manufacturers, and I appreciate some of those guys getting us the operators so we can do some of the testing on them. And I've been working on that along with a couple of the other people here. So uh, we're just doing real-world testing. We're actually mounting it up on a door control uh, and running it through its paces and making sure it works. So all the products we talked about today, including the three that are currently compliant with the, mm -hmm. the Atom revisions, um, are available uh, today. Um, you can go on the website. You can give us a call. Actually, the website has a chat function now. So um, if you want to get a hold of chat or some other members of the team, um, if you have questions while you're on there, you can do that um, and, or reach out to your, to your local uh, sales reps. But um, I don't think we have anything else to cover today. This video will be available afterwards um, for review. Um, and we also want to talk about our other videos, um, more in-depth on each one of these products. We've already created videos. Um, some technical questions, some commonly asked questions that Chad gets and things, those are available on our YouTube page. Oh, looks like uh, we got a last question in. And so we have, is there or will there be an interface for monitoring of old sensors? Uh, the, the difficulty that you're going to run into with having some kind of an interface, and that has been discussed with our engineering team. We're looking into it, uh, so I'm not going to give you a definite no, but the problem that we're running into is a lot of the old sensors, because they have to trigger the relay contact a couple of different times in order to tell the door control that they're still there, you just about have to have a sensor that knows what to do when it has that 12 volts taken away from it. And having a sensor that goes in between, or having an interface that goes in between a current sensor that's out there that doesn't have the sensor monitoring built into it 
and having a door control that may not have the sensor monitoring built into it. It's it's really going to be difficult to do, and that's one of the reasons why they didn't make it a retrofit type of change to the standard. If it's already installed out there and the system is already in place, you don't have to go through and retrofit it to make it compliant. But if you do have some of the old equipment that's out there and you haven't installed or have not installed it on a, a door, you may want to talk to the manufacturer of the automatic door control or even us with some of the sensor products and find out you know, what you can do in regards to getting a sensor that is going to be compliant with a new install. Um, I know we're in discussions as far as how we're going to handle any of the older sensors that are out there. The, the main thing that we're looking at is a lot of our sensors aren't used for power operated door systems. They're used in low energy operators. They're used for other applications like fume hoods or other things that you might run into. So it's not going to be primarily having to replace all of those sensors that are out there. Um, you know, so we've got things in place that we're looking at, but an interface that goes in between is going to be difficult to do. Yep. And then we had a, we had another question come in. Uh, will older sensors still meet the Atom certification? Those three that we specifically talked about, and then possibly new versions of. Tutorials. Yeah. Uh, some of the older sensors that are out there currently that you may have in stock, um, you know, everything from the DH94, the DH400, that sort of thing, may not meet new install regulations once this goes into effect. So if you've got a few of those laying around, uh, you may want to see if there's any way you can get them up and, and going before the 90 days is up and this is, goes into effect. Um, if you do have back inventory that isn't going to be compliant with those, that's what we're looking into is how do we make those compliant, how do we go about doing those. But there are going to be situations where you can use those sensors and you're not going to have to worry about being compliant with that particular standard. Like I said, the low energy operators, some of the other applications that are out there are going to require it. So. Thanks for sliding in there at the end, Gil, right before we got done. Uh, glad to answer your question. Um, I think we've got everyone, unless anyone else has got anything. As I was saying, we have more detailed videos on our sensors available on the website. If you go to about and then uh, door products. We also have some things on our traffic products there, um, but all those available uh, with chat as well, going through frequently asked questions, install advice, um, common uses um, for our products. If I might add one thing though, um, if you do have particular questions that you'd like us to cover in upcoming videos, upcoming uh, webinars, et cetera, feel free to use our tech support email, mm -hmm. send those to me. I can keep them in mind for future uh, product videos, that sort of thing. Um, looks like we got another one coming in from Craig. Uh, mm -hmm. If you change a sensor on an older operator, so not a new install, but changing a sensor on an older operator, will it have to be um, applied to this code? I don't believe it will because basically changing a, a sensor on an older operator, the older operator's already been installed. You're not changing the entire system. You're not doing a new install. So it's not going to be it's not going to have to be compliant with the new code. I think the only time that you're going to have to be compliant with the new standard is when you're starting from scratch doing a new install. Uh, if you're just going out and repairing an existing system, that's not really changing anything with the whole system. Thanks for that one, Craig. Anything else out there? We'll give another couple seconds. Like we said, uh, feel free to, if you don't have a current product binder, uh, message us. We'll get one of those out to you. We also have the digital version of the product binder, so we'll email that to you right away while we're getting the physical one out to you. Um, other than that, I uh, hope you guys all have a great rest of your day, and thanks for jumping on today. Yep. Thanks Sorry lot, we Jack. covered things so quickly. <laughs> we went through it rather quick. But, yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks for joining me today, Chad, and you guys have a great day. Thanks, guys.